Hello, today let us discuss about the pelvis, pelvic bones, type of female pelvis, muscles and ligaments attached to the female pelvic organs and also we will discuss about the diameters of female pelvic inlet. Pelvis are the lower part of the torso which is located between the abdomen and the legs. These provide supports to the intestine. Also, this contains the bladder and the reproductive organs. There are some structural difference between the male pelvis and the female pelvis. The female pelvis will be broader and wider. This is helpful for providing enough space for a baby to develop and pass through the birth canal. The pelvis is made up of hip bones, sacrum and coccyx. There are two hip bones which is present on the left and right side of the body. Together they form the part of the pelvis which is called pelvic girdle. Each hip bones is made up of three smaller bones. They are called ilium, ischium and pubis. Ilium is the largest part. It is broad and fan shaped. We can feel the arches of ilium when we put hands on our hips. This is called as ilia crust. Next one is ischium which is situated below the ilium and behind the pubis. Most of the body weight falls on these when we sit down. Pubis is the most anterior portion of the hip bone. It consists of a body, superior ramus and an inferior ramus. The pubic body is located medially. It articulates with the opposite pubic body at the symphysis pubis. These three are comes together and forms as a tabulum where the femur head attaches. Next is sacrum. It is connected to the lower part of the vertebrae. It is made up of five vertebrae which are fused together. This is thick and it helps to support the body weight. The last one is coccyx. It is also called tailbone which is connected to the bottom of the sacrum and it is supported by a several ligaments. This is made up of four vertebrae. These are fused together and form a triangle shaped structure. Now let us see the female pelvis. It has two parts. They are true pelvis and false pelvis. True pelvis lies below the pelvic brim. It consists of the pelvic inlet, mid pelvis and pelvic outlet. The false pelvis is the shallow portion above the pelvic brim. It supports the abdominal viscera. Now let us see the types of female pelvis. There are four types according to the shape of the pelvic inlet. The pelvic inlet is the upper area of the pelvic cavity. They are gynecoid, android, anthropoid and platypeloid. The gynecoid pelvis is the most common type which is a normal female pelvis and transversely rounded or blunt. The gynecoid pelvis is the most favorable or successful labor and birth. The android pelvis bears more resemblance to the male pelvis. It is narrow, herd shaped or wedge shaped. This is not favorable for childbirth or a labor. The narrow pelvic phases can cause slow descent and mid pelvic arrest. The anthropoid pelvis is oval shaped. It has adequate outlet with a narrow pubic arch which is similar to an upright egg or an oval shaped. The platypeloid pelvis is flat with an oval inlet. It is the least common type of pelvis. It has wide transverse diameter but short anterior posterior diameter. This makes the labor and the childbirth difficult. Now let us see the pelvic inlet diameters. We have anterior posterior diameter, transverse diameter, oblique diameter and posterior sagittal diameter. The anterior posterior diameter is the distance from the symphysis pubis to the sacral promontory. It can be divided as three that is diagonal conjugate, true conjugate or conjugate vera and the obstetric conjugate. The diagonal conjugate is the distance from the lower margin of the symphysis pubis to the sacral promontory. True conjugate or conjugate vera is the distance from the upper margin of the symphysis pubis to the sacral promontory. Obstetric conjugate is the smallest front to back distance through which the fetal head must pass in. The transverse diameter is the largest of the pelvic inlet diameters which is located at the right angles to the true conjugate. The oblique diameter is the diagonal diameter which is not clinically measurable. The posterior sagittal diameter is the distance from the point where the anterior posterior and transverse diameters cross each other from there to the middle of the sacral promontory. Now let us see the pelvic ligaments. The main female pelvic ligaments are uterine ligament, ovarian ligament and the broad ligament. 
the uterine ligament is primarily associated with the uterus the ovarian ligament is primarily associated with the ovaries and the broad ligament which is a sheet of peritoneum which supports the uterus fallopian tubes and the ovaries it extends both sides of the pelvic wall it can be further divided into three components that linked to the different part of the female reproductive organs first is mesometrium it supports the uterus next is mesovarium which supports the ovaries and the mesosalphinx which supports the fallopian tubes i hope you understand this video if you like the video please like share if you want me to update any new topic please comment below and also don't forget to subscribe my channel and press the bell button thank you